the APP, the Automatic Processing Press. This little press was designed to prep your cases for you. It can resize, decay, you can prime a pocket switch, you can bust bust, and you can size cast bullets on this press. It's a brilliant little press. This thing is amazing. I tested this thing to the max. This press has worked. This thing has worked. As you can see, I've got it set up with my sizing dial. I love this press. Then we saw pictures on the Lee website about an automatic case primer that looks basically the same as the APP press. We were all looking, we were wondering, what is this press? Finally, we started getting some details. This was a press that's going to be designed and it's, its only task is going to be priming cases. Now, why would Lee make a press just to prime cases? You can do it on your load master, you can do it in your single stage, your turret press, all those presses can, can be primed. Well, Lee has got a lot of customers that hand prime and they thought this would be a nice option for customers as it can fit a case feeder, which is a separate on it, you have to buy it separate. You can case feed it and it will speed up the process of priming your, your cases. And this thing is quick and it's easy to use. So as you can see, they look almost the same these presses, but they're not the same. This press, the APP, cannot be converted for priming, like the ACP. The ACP though, can be converted to resize. It can be converted to size bullets. It can be converted to bulge bust. I wouldn't as, uh, advise that for 9 more bulge busting. I would stick to APP with it. I'll show you the differences in the presses now. As you saw in the intro of the video, I primed a couple of cases for you. I primed probably 500 cases on this press. And it works. And it's so easy to use. But let's stop talking about the APP because you all know I love this press. Let's look at this press, the ACP, and how it works. I'm going to strip this one apart and show you exactly how this press works. And we'll show you how to set up this press. Right, let's look at the differences between the APP press and the ACP. Notice the link. Notice that big spring inside there. Okay, let's put that one away. Check the link on the ACP. It's been cut to accommodate the primer system. So you lose a lot of strength here. That's the main reason why Lee does not suggest primer pocket swaging on this press. And I don't suggest bulge busting 9 more parabellum on this press. Um, you would be able to bulge bust the normal calibers that Lee suggests you can bulge bust, like 40, uh, Smith & Wesson 45 ACP, straight four cases, those types of picks. Um, and you'd be able to size your, your cases on you and size your cast bullets. So if you're in the market for something like that, don't buy the APP, buy this press. Now, you'll notice that's the difference there. You'll notice there's no spring in here also. And that's all to accommodate the priming system. Priming system on this works a bit differently. Um, you'll also notice a blast shield. Um, Lee likes these things. Um, I think if you force this press in a primer SQ or you've done something wrong and you're going to force this press, there's a chance you can set off a primer. Any priming system can, that can happen. So keep that on, be careful, never force the press. Let's strip this down and go through all the parts bit by bit. Okay, let's stop on the top die carrier. Now obviously there's no die in here now. We've got this part here based on a breech lock design. So a breech lock bushing will fit in there to accommodate the die. That part there, you've got the guide pin and spring. And then you've got these plastic bushings. Claws are I call them. Two different ones like that, they fit into each other. This grabs hold of the case. This lines the case up. This press doesn't use shallowness. That's a good thing about this press. No shallowness for prime. Let me just be clear on that. If you're going to do something else on it, you'll need shallowness. Okay, so you've got these two parts. That's the top part of the die carrier. Now, if you go to the bottom, take that out. Also based on a breech lock bushing. Basically just holds everything together there. Then you've got your 
small primer attachment, you get a large one also. Let's talk about the primer attachment. Inside there is a primer pin, small, and you get the large one also, and a primer spring. Now, let's just focus on that. Note the two sides of that. You've got a pointed side and you've got a flat side. Note that. That's very important. Okay. Then you've got the rest of the press. Let's take the case speeder off. You've got your normal case slider like you get on the APP press. It's, it's exactly the same thing. You get all the different parts work to accommodate all the different calibers you want to do. Because this thing doesn't use shell holders and uses so little force to prime, uh, you can basically prime any case up to 63.5 millimeters, something like that, two and a half inches. So this is set up for nine mil now. Same as the APP with the claw that opens and closes. It works brilliantly. Okay, so that's it. Now you can see you've got your priming system attached to your rail. Let's take the rail apart and the priming system apart. We'll take it out and we can have a closer look at it. Okay, you're going to need a star screwdriver. I'm going to do a screw in front of the rail, holding the rail in the front. And lose the screw. In the bottom, there's another one. Yeah, don't lose it, set them aside, then you'll note the primer system, system, primer system sorry, is held in place by that screw there. This one just attaches to the rail. So let's take that one out. That's fine. Okay. Screw it around with that will fit in there. Careful not to lose the screws. We got the priming system out through there. Okay. Please don't lose the screws. These presses are so new to the market, we do not have space for them at the moment. So we undo that one there. Take the priming system. I need a smaller screwdriver. one there. You will notice the rail, that one is recessed, that one's there. This screw here attaches to the body. You'll note there. So that's basically the bare press. Okay? Now, if you're going to convert this as an APP, you're going to need a breech lock bushing for the top to accommodate your die. You are also going to need the IPP's shell holder carrier. This part. You will need this. This will go in here. Pick. Oh, depends on what operation you're going to do. It will either go in the bottom or the top. Okay, but enough of the IPP now. Let's look at this place now. We've got everything stripped down there now. You'll see there's not a lot of parts to this press. Let's go through everything now. Let's start with your feed rail. That's exactly the same thing that's on the APP press, works the same. This is a plastic feed, uh, feed rail. You, your cases are fed on this. It's very smooth, it's, it works brilliantly. That works with your case slider. Now the case slider comes with the press, it's the same that's on the APP press. It's got those claws. It will open and close. It grabs the case, it places the case, it leaves it. The spring activates that. Okay? You get all the parts to, uh, for all the different calibers that you can do on the press. You do not get a universal case feeder with the press. You don't get any type of case feeder with it. You get the case slider, you don't get a case feeder. So you're going to have to buy 
or use your case feeder from your Pro 1000 or, or Loadmaster or buy a new universal case feeder. Um, you'll notice I've got one on the APP, I've got one for this press and I've got one for my Loadmaster. It just makes it easier. I've got the same case collator, I just move that around. Right, let's start at the bottom of the press with your primer insert. This thing magic here. You'll notice, like I said previously, it's got a flat side and it's got a pointed side. That's very important. We'll get to that now. But inside there, you will find a primer pin and a spring. That just goes inside there and then it fits in there. Now, it's a loose fit. When you line this up for the press, make sure you line that opening with a flat side here. That will make it easier to insert it into the press. Okay. So that basically as a primer pin that seats the primer. But if we go to the top of the press now, we got this funny thing here. If you've got an APP swage kit, the new one, same thing. Now I don't know who came up with this design. It looks weird, but it works. Because inside there is this guide pin and spring. And that is the top of the guide pin. It fits in there. Now this with these claws that goes in there this forces the case down on the priming pin so there's not a lot of force needed to prime on the system that's why it's so easy to prime because you've got a primer pin being forced from the bottom and you've got the case being forced from the top so that makes it very easy to prime on this press there's almost no feel to it which can be a problem if you run out of primes because it will happen with this press, this, prime, this thing primes so easy and so quick. You're not going to notice it until you go and look at your cases and you see, ha, they're not primed. Then you go and look, oh, primers are in there. So just note that. Make sure your primers is topped up all the way. Now, let's get to the priming system. This is a primer trough that comes with a press. You'll notice it's a bit different than the normal V press. It's got a more extreme angle and it's got this kick to it this thing feeds primers beautifully but there's one or two tricks that you have to consider know about to get this thing to work properly if you note at the bottom it's got a torsion spring there now that spring keeps this side of the primer system down that will stop primers from from flowing through so when you insert it and you put your primers in and this part's not there it's not going to feed primers yeah, I'll explain how that works now. But more importantly, this thing is designed to work with these primer trays. The old primer trays is not going to work with this press. You need these. Now, if you know these primer trays, there's always a trick to where it's locked. It's, there's a bit of play there. This is a plastic injection molded part, so there can be a bit of play. So just find the perfect spot where it locks and it doesn't let primers through. And then when you switch it on again, make sure that the tray can't open. Because if the tray opens, primers can flip inside here. So just look out for that. But that's an old thing with this. You just have to find that perfect position there. Now if you look at the back of these primer trays, they've got two little tabs on the side here. Those tabs fit there. If you notice, this has got a bit of a spring to it. It can open and close. So if you don't, Get your primer trough tray perfectly in here and those two tabs don't engage there. This is going to stay open and you're going to have priming problems. So make sure when you insert this, insert it all the way. So those two little tabs, keep it closed. You can see now it's closed. That's a priming system. It works brilliantly. Now, if you notice at the bottom here, you got See that tab's a bit high. That part's closed there. The torsion spring is keeping close. Let's talk about the spring. The spring is supposed to engage this side only. Make sure it doesn't get stuck on that side. Because if it gets stuck on that side, it's not going to close and open as it should. So the spring just sits there. I don't know if you can see it. I'll post a couple of photos so that you guys can see that properly. So your primers are fed down here like normal with the new ones. And remember with the lead priming systems, this is gravity fed. 
So you're going to have to keep this topped up to ensure good flow of primers. If it gets too low, there's not going to be enough weight on the next primer and it's not going to feed the primer. So keep it topped up. Now we've gone through everything. Let's put it back together so that you can see exactly how this press works. Let's put everything back together. So your primer trough goes onto the rail like that. That screw there, tighten it. It will keep it up there. The screw here, you can't tighten it. It will go into the press. Let's see if we can jiggle this back into the press. That was easy. Okay. Just line everything up again. That clips in there. Now, tighten that screw there. It's a bit of a trick to get the screwdriver in there, but once it's in there, it turns in easily. Nice and tight. You don't want any play here. Okay. Now you can notice how that part is down there. If you feed primers now, it's not going to pass through there. It's going to be stopped there. Now, if we look at the back of the primer clock, we'll see that tab there, and you see the link here. As you are activating it, the link will hit that and it will keep shaking the primer tray so that primers are being fed. So just make sure that makes good contact there. Okay. Now we need to secure the rail completely. So we take the one screw, it goes to the top here. We turn that in. Be careful not to cross thread. Make sure that it's nice and snug, that everything is level. Now the bottom screw. Nice and tight. Everything is level. Now, let's go to our primer insert. We're working with a small primer insert. So make sure you have your small primer pin in there and the spring. Now, line that part up with a flat side. Like it just makes it easier to locate and lock it in place. Actually, much easier if you do it on the press with a press um, installed. Okay, you hear click in there, secure. Now, what you want to see. Is that that plastic part there, I'll post pictures again, that part is engaged with the primer insert. That um, pointed in part of the uh, primer insert has pushed that up, so now primers will flow through. Okay, that's the bottom off. Now the top off. That part, this part, goes inside. Drop it in there. Okay. Guide rod and spring goes in the middle of there, and then this push down and secure. Your press is assembled again. Right now, secure your press back onto your bench. So I'm using a bench plate system, so it's quite easy for me. Now we've got the press there. Okay. Now we can fit the rest of the stuff back on your case slider. Now these case sliders, let me open it up here and I'll show you. If you notice there, there's a little plastic screw there that sets the tension of these fingers that grab. Okay? So for something heavier, you need more tension. For something lighter, you need less tension. So you're going to have to play with that to sort that out, get that set up right. But if you've got an APV press, you probably sorted that already. These things are very easy to set up and use. So that part clicks on top. This is for a 9 mil setup. Okay, so slide it back one here, add the spring back on. Okay, now 
listen to this. You know, that click. That's a bit different from the IPP press. That extra click there, it just makes sure the case is aligned with those fingers. That, remember, no shell holder. So there's no shell holder holding the case in place. It's just there, and as it releases, this grabs the case and pushes down. That's a case feed system. Now you can add a universal case feeder to that also. I'm not going to put it on now because I want to be able to see everything here. But you've got your holder here in the back for your universal case feeder. Set that up, fill your cases, carry on. Okay, so we can just confirm now that the case slider is working as it should. Now, Lee mentions in the instructions, when you go to the upstroke, when you go to the top, complete the stroke. But you heard that click also there now. That ensures that the case is aligned. Okay? And then you will have a perfectly aligned case and it will prime perfectly on the downstroke. So just make sure of that. Now, let's grab some primers, get it in here, and let's get primed. Okay, we've added some primers. Remember what I said about this lock? Make sure it can't fall out. So the lock is not always in the exact spot on each different one. It's, you have to just play with it, find it there, make sure nothing will fall out. Now, we are going to insert it here and insert it all the way. Remember, like I said, so that it can close the priming system. Okay. Now, I've seen some videos where guys complaining that it's too difficult to get to the lock here. It really isn't. On. So, give it a tap, pull it up. That's just to ensure that primers are there and flow. Now, make sure you have primers on the priming pin. There is two can fit there next to each other. One is on the pin, one is waiting to be fed. Sometimes what I found is it doesn't always engage. So all I do is I take a screwdriver, I just lift the one piece here and just click it in place, primer starts feeding. Primers are inserted here, everything is ready now, we can start priming it here. Right, let's test everything. We're grabbing a couple of cases. We go down, we insert it into the case inserter. Now we're gonna go slow, we're testing. Whenever you set something up, test it first, go slow, make sure nothing's wrong. So, go all the way up, clicks in place, we're going to go down. Now notice the force here. Almost nothing. Okay? Perfect. That, that primer is seated perfect. But you won't get better than that. Right, while talking about force. As you notice now, you don't need a lot of force on this place, okay? You've got a guide pin and spring on top here that forces the case down. You've got your primer pin spring at the bottom, primer pin and spring at the bottom, forces the primer up. So they do meet and you don't need a lot of force. Now, like I explained, that can be a problem if your primers run dry and you don't notice it, you're going to be running the cases without primers, you won't notice it. Um, so make sure you don't run out of primers. Give us okay shake every now and again, just to make sure. Now, as you don't need that much force on this press, please do not force this press. If something goes wrong, you've got a primer pocket that's damaged, you've got a primer that fits you or upside down, or something happened. I'm not saying it's going to happen, but rather be safe. Do not force the press. You've got primers there, you've got them all stacked up there behind the blast shield, and that blast shield is there for a reason. If you force the press and a primer is skewed or something, and you use enough force, you will set up a primer. And that can set off the one next to it, next to it, the next to it, and carry on like that. I don't think it will happen, but don't force fix. Whenever, on, on any press, any press you use, even in a hand primer, if it's something is stuck. Stop, look, see, fix it. Don't go force fix. If you stop and you look and you, and you fix the problem there, it will save you parts, it will save you frustration, it will save you primers going off in your face. Okay? 
I've had primers go off in a Lee Pro 1000 because I've forced the press. It wakes you up. Don't do that. So, you don't need a lot of force on this press, so be careful of that. So, let's do that again. See, there's no force required. This thing primes so easy and so quick when you've got your universal case feeder fixed on here and you're feeding cases automatically. So quick that I stopped using this little bucket that came with the load master. This is too small for this press. I've got a 10 litre bucket here that all my cases are falling into. This thing is so quick. I'll set it up and we'll run a couple. I'll set up the case feeder now and we'll run a couple more cases here just to show you off to close off this. And as a final move, don't be tempted to go to it. Just work at a good pace. This press is so easy. You're going to be tempted to go as quick as possible. You're going to run out of primers in the priming throw. So just be careful of it. And notice, no force required. This ACP is the end of the end Thanks guys.